Today, by surprise, AMD announced some new GPUs. One of them has two GPUs in one, the W6800 Duo, and it comes in an MPX module. What is it? I'm going to explain it and I'm going to tell you what this may mean for everybody, even PC gamers. Let's get started. Hey guys, so today's video is sponsored by CDK Deals, genuine CD keys, not only for software like Windows 10, and we also have a coupon code where you're going to be able to get this for under $20. What you first want to do is go and sign up for an account just to make sure all of your information is in there. You can go and search for, it's going to be the Windows 10 Pro, it's OEM, very easy process, you add it to your your cart and you're going to see that you're going to have the option to put a coupon code you're going to put in cc20 that's my coupon code and you're going to get 20 percent off and then you just go through the regular checkout process basically you just have to go in windows i'm going to show you how to do this now you enter the cd key in there and you'll see it's going to work without any issue and for the price that you're paying i really think it's a fantastic deal to get a real genuine smooth working copies of windows 10. All right, so let's jump right into it. Today, AMD announced a couple of surprise GPUs, and it's gonna have something to do with this guy back here, and they're gonna be MPX modules. Now, if you guys saw previously, AMD announced the W6800. This is a workstation GPU. That one was for the PC, and basically the big difference between a workstation GPU and one like a 6800 or a 6800 XT that you would buy for a gaming PC, typically it's gonna be clocked a little lower, but it will have much more VRAM. In this case, instead of 16 gigabytes of VRAM, it's gonna have 32 gigabytes of VRAM in the case of the W6800. Now, the W6800 for PC, the card that looks blue, that one is retailing for around 2200 to 2400. That's about the MSRP. Now, that's not scalper pricing or anything like that. Workstation GPUs are just a little bit more expensive. The Dual, the W6800X Dual, is retailing MSRP for $5,000. Now, this is going to be two Navi 21 GPUs in one unit. Now, this is going to be in an MPX module, which is exclusive to the Mac Pro. But it does open up the question, if they can build two GPUs in one in an MPX module, why can't they do it in future GPU gaming cards and put two in one like they've done in the past with the Radeon and the Vega 2 Dual? So quickly, let me explain what an MPX module is. Now, MPX, it just means a Mac Pro Expansion Module. I know it sounds high tech, but it's actually pretty straightforward. All of them, including the dual GPU, they basically have no fans. You can see right through it, it's gonna be sort of the heat sink, a very large heat sink. This is a single space heat sink, but the, you know, the more powerful GPUs have a double heat sink. Basically, it's all passive cooling. Now, the Mac Pro in the front here has three very large fans. They spin and they let the airflow go right through to the back. That's why it's really pretty silent and you don't need any you know, fans or anything like that. Now, the W6800, um, the Dual, it's gonna be the same thing. Only difference is it has two chips on one GPU and it has the same fanless pass-through design. And of course, this is an MPX module. This is gonna be the biggest difference. As you can see, a traditional GPU would have just one PCIe 16X connector. This one has two. The Mac Pro motherboard specifically has two connectors. One of them is supposed to be the regular power. The other one is supposed to pass through Thunderbolt and things like that. Usually these MPX modules will have about four Thunderbolt 3 um, ports on them, as well as allow the GPU to pull a lot more power. In fact, they can support up to 500 watts. The previous generation Vega 2 Dual, which had two Vega 2, which are similar to the Radeon 7, two Vega 2 on one GPU, that one uh, pulls about 475 watts. As you know, if you try to put that on a regular PC motherboard, that wouldn't work. That's why sort of this dual PCIe design is so important for something like that. So definitely very exciting GPU options. So which of these W workstation GPUs that they announced today? Well, the fastest one is going to be a W6900X. By itself, it costs over $5,400, very, very expensive module. Now, this is similar to a 6900 XT, but it's gonna have all of the benefits that sort of a workstation card would, and then specifically an MPX module. It's gonna have the same passive layout. It's gonna have Thunderbolt, and of course, it's gonna have 32 gigabytes of VRAM instead of just 16 gigabytes with a regular card. Now, you can add two 6900 XTs to your Mac Pro and connect them via what they call the Infinity 
Unity Fabric Link. It's basically almost like the same idea as uh, Crossfire or SLI in, in NVIDIA's terms when you would connect two GPUs together. This basically, if an application supports it, like Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve, if that application supports two GPUs with Infinity Fabric, it allows them to communicate with each other significantly faster. In fact, it's about five times the regular speed of PCIe. So you're really talking about 84 gigabits of data. So it's considerably faster than just having two single GPUs. Now, going down the line, the next GPU, or you could say almost equal as to the one uh, W6900X, that's going to be the W6800 Duo. That's the one that's sort of the intro of the video that has two Navi 21 6800s on one GPU. Now, this is definitely pretty exciting, but it's not the first time that they've done it. Apple and AMD did the Vega Pro Duo, which basically had two Vega 2s on one GPU. Certainly, even that GPU, especially for video rendering, very, very powerful, but that's something that's a little bit outdated now. And that one was also pretty expensive, around $5,600, even though recently Apple did drop that price by around $1,000 when these new modules were just announced today. So going down the line, then we have the single W6800. This is going to have 32 gigabytes of VRAM, around 60 compute units compared to 80 on the W6900X. And of course, two of them would have about 120. Now, this is going to be the cheapest option that they sort of announced today with the W6800. It comes in at a around roughly $25 to $2,600. In my opinion, the best balanced one does seem to be the W6800, the Duo, the one that comes with two Navi 21 6800s on one. That one, around $5,000, does seem to be a better deal than the single W6900, and it does seem to give you the performance needed instead of just having one of the W6800s. Now, during the last several months, I did test the 6900 XT reference GPUs in the Mac Pro. Ever since Big Sur 11.4, you've been able to actually plug them in and they've worked without any issues. Now, it's really fast. Compared to the more expensive Vega 2 Duo, Dual 6900 XTs, even the non-Apple version, just the regular AMD version, were really, really fast when it came to DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut and Octane. In fact, they put out some of the fastest times that I've ever seen. Now, I'm expecting the W6800 to be slower than the 6900 XT, unless you really need the, you know, 32 gigabytes of VRAM or 64 if you pair two of them together. For the most part, you pay more to have an MPX module in order to have the Thunderbolt ports, in order to have the passive cooling, and of course, in order to have the 32 gigabytes of VRAM instead of just 16. So certainly very interesting to see that at least Apple is continuing to upgrade this Mac Pro. And of course, if we talk about gaming, these really aren't gaming GPUs. They're gonna perform maybe as good or most likely a little bit worse than their gaming counterparts. And that's just gonna come down to the fact that they're not really meant for gaming. Often they're gonna be downclocked a little bit. So they're not gonna reach the same speeds that was like you know an AMD 6900 XT gaming card. And of course, they have more VRAM, which is going to be more applicable for 3D applications and video rendering. So these don't really perform anywhere near their gaming counterparts. These are really exclusively workstation GPUs. But does this indicate that having the technology to put two GPUs on one, something that we haven't seen for quite a long time aside from these Apple GPUs, could AMD actually make something like this as a gaming GPU for the mass market for a regular PC? Now, I think they definitely could. There's there's nothing here that's proprietary. You don't necessarily need an MPX module with the two PCIe connectors. You don't need to have Thunderbolt or anything like that. You just have to make sure that the GPU stay within sort of a power limit. The W6800 Duo, right now, I think both are around 400 watts. You can certainly tune that and make it work within the scope of a regular PC. So it would be really interesting to have them connected by some type of crossfire or infinity fabric internally, like they are here, but make it some type of a gaming GPU and of course if you can natively connect them maybe they could do something where you don't have to rely on developers and having like SLI support like Nvidia's case or Crossfire support in the case of AMD that would be a lot easier if it's just two GPUs seen as one in sort of the hardware that could certainly make for some really interesting releases maybe a way to make these GPUs more powerful is to put two chips in one that way at least space wise everything could be a little bit more efficient and it could 
definitely start to increase performance significantly. Now, even the W6800 Duo, it's seen as two separate GPUs if you put it in bootcamp in Windows, just like the Vega 2 Duo was, and of course in macOS is the same story. Even though they're linked together and they do work versus Infinity Fabric, they don't work as a single GPU. So if your application doesn't take advantage of them, it's only going to be able to use one. Like if you do a benchmark that can only do single GPU, it's going to give you the lower number and not both together. So that's something to keep in mind when people are doing two at the same time. And of course, you can add a total of four of these, so two different dual modules for a total of four GPUs, which would be really very, very useful for people that are doing 3D rendering and even in some type of video editing editing workflows. And then one final thing about the pricing. Yes, they definitely are expensive, as is the Mac Pro. It's definitely not a good value proposition for most people that are used to PCs, but it is sort of an enthusiast platform. We're getting upgrades. You can certainly do a lot of PC-like things, at least with this Mac Pro. It's not on the same level as sort of Apple's other more closed ecosystems like the M1 MacBooks and things like that, where you can't even upgrade RAM. And this one, I actually got it for cheap and upgraded it myself to a 28-core CPU. I upgraded the RAM myself itself, the hard drive, and of course the GPU modules as well. So you can actually really tinker with it a lot more than a typical PC. And remember, these are workstations and not gaming PCs. If you price them or compare them to similar systems out there from like Dell or whatever other Intel or AMD systems, you'll see that it's actually not really terribly overpriced for what it can actually do. And getting upgrades like this, certainly very, very interesting. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Very cool to see two GPUs in one if you're a, a technology technology enthusiast, Mac or PC, really cool and I do hope it comes to the PC side in the future as well. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.